Exponent rules are pretty difficult because they're just hard to wrap our brains around. We're not really equipped mentally to deal with this kind of thing, so we have to memorize it, and we also need to just kind of accept the rules for what they are. But I'm going to go through this in the order in which you should maybe think about it if this is not something that comes naturally, naturally to you. So first and foremost, negative exponents have nothing to do with negatives that occur outside of the exponents, right? So the negative that is kind of in the next to the two thirds in the exponent is not going to magically appear outside of the exponent. It does stuff. It absolutely has an effect, but it's never going to do something like what's going on in A and B, where it comes out of the exponent. So sometimes this is a really helpful thing to remember because even if you have no idea what else is going on, you can at least get rid of these choices that kind of spontaneously add a negative just because there was a negative in the exponent. There are different planes of existence, okay? They don't, they don't kind of work the same way, so just kind of remember that and maybe that gets you a 50-50 shot. Now the real way that negatives work is the second thing we're going to talk about. Basically a negative in an exponent has to do more with like a fraction. It's a way of understanding where something is within a fraction. So usually that's the first thing that I start working with when I start untangling these questions because it's the hardest thing in my opinion. So what I would do is I would take this b to the negative two-thirds and it's basically like every number already exists in a fraction and if we want to add or remove a negative from an exponent we move the entire thing within a fraction. So in this case right it's b to the negative two-thirds and b is over one because any number can be over one if we want it to be and I would move that to the bottom of the fraction and drop the negative. So instead I will now have one over b to the positive two-thirds, right? So the negative does not come out. All it does is it lets us move something within a fraction. We can either add the negative and move it down, or we can remove the negative and move it down. It doesn't matter. It's just a matter of what it's, where the negative is and where the exponent is. All it has to do with is the position within a fraction. And the reason that that's the first thing I deal with is then it kind of lets me see the rest of the exponent in a much easier way. Now I can just think about the rules for fractional exponents. And basically, this is a double exponent. The top part is a regular old exponent, a square, and the bottom part is the root. And so in this case, when we have two-thirds, we're going to have the cubed root of b squared. And now again, remember that is on the bottom of a fraction, meaning that d is going to be our answer because it is one over the cubed root of b squared. This is why I deal with that negative first, so that I can just kind of see where something is going to end up no matter what. These are tricky questions. They are very difficult. Hopefully there's only one per SAT, so it's not a huge priority for most people. But if you can get them, the rules are predictable and the way that they test these are pretty predictable as well. So hopefully it's some easy points that you can get to get closer to that 800 if you just memorize them and practice.